Hi and welcome. So how do you talk as a dinner guest in Tibetan? How, if you're invited to somebody's house or if you're eating with people in a restaurant or you want to talk about food uh, or compliment the cook, all of these things we're going to talk a little bit about now. And as a little bonus, uh, just because we've been talking a lot about spelling and we talked about texts and chaise, but I didn't really show how to spell that, we'll just do that briefly. So a tech, which is this little triangle shaped syllable marker, is spelled ta dingbu te ka tek. So tech, that's a tech, that's what follows here. And the she, whoops, the she is sha ta she. And that is, and we'll put one here, that's what this is, that's what this she is, the final line after a phrase. Sometimes it works as a comma, sometimes it works as a period, a uh, semicolon, depends on the context. So it uh, punctuation is not quite the same in English. Tibetans use many um, particles as well to indicate punctuation. So actual syllables by themselves or letter, uh, words by themselves will function as um, things that we would think of as punctuation marks. So a tek and a she, now you know how to spell them. And so back to our topic. So let's say you've been invited to somebody's house and you want to say, oh, you have a lovely house. You have a nice, comfortable house. Kangba is house. Oops, oh, down, down. Kangba. D, this. Be, very. Ki, po. Ki po is comfortable, nice, fun. It can be translated in many different ways. In this case, comfortable, nice, lovely, you might say. Do. Kangpa di be kipo do. This house is very comfortable. This house is very nice. And so once you've arrived, you might say, uh, the, or the host of the the getting get together might say, "Su uh, ja." This is the honorific form of tea, so the very polite form of saying tea. She, she is the very polite form of saying eat or drink or consume. I think of it as consume. It's kind of a good shortcut because you can either con eat or drink when you say consume. So, and then ro nang. Ro nang is the very polite way of saying please, please go ahead and or please would you. So the polite. This is essentially suja shero nang is the very polite way of saying please won't you have some tea that's what you might say in english and if it were a gathering among friends and you don't need to be so polite or with people who have a dialect that's much more direct you might just hear something simply just cha tong cha tong tea drink full stop that's it that's all you need to say tea drink drink some tea in english you would just say have some tea or drink some tea or two easy ways you might hear to offer you some tea and to say thank you if you remember okay next if you want if they're offering you food to eat you might hear shela Shela is the polite word for food. Shela. She. So again, consume. Used for both eating and drinking. Polite. The polite form is used for both eating and drinking. Oops. Ji. Ni. 
B. So, Sheila, Shegim B. Will you consume some food? Will you have some food? And the not so extremely polite form is kala. Kala. Kala is food, regular food, as opposed to polite, extremely polite food. Kala. Sa. And in this case, sa is. Um, it's different. Tung for drinking, sa for eating. There is also dak for licking, which is like for liquids that are thicker, like oatmeal and yogurt and things like this. But we'll maybe cover that in another lesson. That's a bit. Uh, that's a bit esoteric for me. I, I don't know how to explain that very well yet. So. So kala sa yi yin. Be, will you have something to drink? Just a regular way of asking. And the answer in either case, I mean, if you're being polite, you can say la so. This is a very polite way of saying yes. La so. La so. And then, as we said before, you could say tu je che which is thank you, although thank you is not as common in Tibet. Uh, it's more used in India and, and other countries because it's sort of a simple way to reflect the Western habit of always saying thank you. Many Tibetans will just say oh, oh or, uh, you know, just it, it, I, they take it as a given. Uh, oh yes, and just so you're aware for the lick option, la ta ta, oops, la la ta, oi, la ta ta da ka da, is lick. But again, we'll get into that another time. I'll find some good sentences for us to practice with. So uh, many people in the west are vegetarians not so much in tibet although there are vegetarians there as well the climate there tends to be such that people eat more meat uh, so you might need to ask if you're a vegetarian sha du ge sha du ge is there meat in it does it have meat in it sha du ge and the answer might be sha is meat or flesh, either either one. But when you're eating, you talk about meat. So sha du sha du. There is meat in it, or it has meat. It has meat, or sha mi. Oops. Minduk. So if you're listening carefully, you'll notice that you hear it, the, the two words mi and duk. When you put them together, it becomes minduk. So this ao in front of the duk, the a prefix tends to produce nasalization. So minduk, minduk. You will hear more of that typically. Minduk, sha minduk. It doesn't have any meat. Or, yeah, it doesn't have any meat. Oh, another sentence that's useful is, let's say now, okay, you're happy that you know which food has meat and which food doesn't have meat. Nga uh, la mar whoops, tre ro nang. Nala mar chero nang. So to me, nala mar butter, che give ronang. Please do. Please do give me the butter. Please do give me some butter or give me the butter. Nala mar chero nang. 
Or if you want a slightly less formal way of asking for the butter, you can say, Nala, oops, Nala, Mar, Je, Tang. Tang is a sort of a slightly more direct form of please do it. So, Jonang is more formal, Tang is just please, please do it, but not, not quite as formal as Ronang. Nala mar tang. Please give me the butter. So maybe now you've finished your meal and you want to tell the host that you enjoyed your food. So you can say shela uh, or kala, depending on the context, right? Shela is the honorific, kala is regular, so but we'll just use kala. Ka la. De, this food, shimpo, shimpo, tasty, delicious, tasty. Duk. So this food is delicious. This food is delicious, or the food is delicious. Kala de shimpo du. Then you want to tell the cook that they are very good at what they do. So you can say. Oops. Cherang Ma. Oops. Machen. Machen. Cook. As in the person who does the work of a cook. Machen. Kepa. Kepa. So like a skilled or expert. Expert, je. Kiaran machin kepare. You are a skillful cook. You are a good cook. And then the person might answer, uh, and Or another way to say thank you is, ka jin che. Very kind. Very kind. Katin, katinche. You are very kind. Katinche. So we can practice with some other words. So I'll give us a vocabulary list of useful foods and drinks to talk about. So pak uh, lep is bread. Palep, palep, paklep, paklep. Is bread. Shogo uh, is potato. Shogo, potato. J, J is rice. J is rice. Tell, te or tell, vegetables. Next we have. Payata cha sha chu chu ra. Whoops. Chu ra. Chura. Chura is cheese. Chura. Then we have ta wasur. Ta wasur. Ta. So uh, this is kind of in uh, one of the few words that are that have a wasur on them that are, might be used in an everyday context. And ta is salt, salt. Ta wasur, ta is salt. Uh, then we have si ben. Si ben is chili, as in like the red hot sauce that you put on food. Very popular with Tibetan people, especially on dumplings. Si ben. Uh, then you might have uh, cha, which we talked about. Cha tong, cha tong Will you drink some tea? Cha, and if you want to be more specific, uh, cha ngarmo, which is sweet tea. Ngarmo is sweet. Cha ngarmo, sweet tea. Or if you are adventurous, you might try pe cha. Pe cha. Pe is Tibet. And cha is tea, so Tibetan tea. Tibetan tea is made with 
uh, salt and butter. So it tastes a bit more soup-like than what we think of as tea. Uh, so that's, that's uh, something you might like to try. And then, Richa, Tibetan tea, and chu, oops, chu, chu is water, chu is important, chu is water, and wo ma is milk, wo ma, wo ma is milk, wo ma. And some popular dishes that you might have, uh, mok, 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 lots of people love mok, mok. Mok mok is dumplings, dumplings. And then uh, tukpa, tukpa is soup, often like more like a stew or uh, depending on what's in it, but tukpa is, tends to be sort of a thick soup of some kind. There's also tentuk, which is made with pulled noodles, but anyways, for now, ten, the tukpa is good enough to practice your sentences. Uh, and then if you want to know what's in the tukpa, for example, uh, some popular things to have in your tukpa, in your soup, or in your momos even, is, whoops, lang sha. So lang sha is beef, beef flesh, beef flesh, beef meat, or cow, cow meat, literally. And then, cha, sha, which is uh, bird meat, so chicken usually, cha sha, chicken, and then you have also nya sha, which is fish, fish flesh, fish meat. So a nya is a living fish, and nya sha is fish, as like on your plate. If you eat it, although you can note that fish is not a terribly popular food in Tibet, they would more well. Part of it is a Buddhist idea that you try to if you if you have to kill an animal, you try to minimize the impact. So if you you can, you eat a larger animal so that you do not have to kill quite as many. That's just sort of a cultural point that you won't see fish being eaten as often as bigger animals like beef. Or sheep, for example. So those are some items to practice with. And so, for example, you might want to say, uh, "Okay, mok, mok, di," and then you remember the plural is "tso," "dinso." So this "di" becomes "dinso." Though uh, these, these momos, these momos. Shimbo du. Shimbo du. Are delicious. These momos are delicious. Momo dinzo shimbo du. Momo dinzo shimbo du. So I'll go back through what we looked at today just so you can listen and practice a little bit and then you can go through them yourself. So we talked about the tsek and the she. And then kangba di. Pe kibodu. Suja sheronang or chatung. Shela shegimbe. Kala sagimbe. Lasso tujiche. And we talked about duck a little bit. Shaduge. Shaduk or shaminduk. Nala mar cheronang or nala mar. Then we have Kala di Shimbodu Chirang Machen Kebare Katinche. You are very kind. Baklep Shogo De Tsel Chura Tsa Siben. Cha ngarmo, pecha, chu, woma, mokmok, tukpa, 
langsha, chasha, nyasha. Momo dinzo shimbodu. So I hope you get a chance to enjoy some delicious Tibetan food and practice your Tibetan. Listen again if you need to.